it's nice to see so many people here and know that we can uh, change gears in midstream and uh, still have a very meaningful Memorial Day ceremony for the town of Sunderland. So I welcome you all here and I thank you all for coming and being a part of this, this evening. Um, we're going to get started in a couple of minutes. Uh, well, not a couple of minutes, less than a minute. Uh, there's a couple more people coming in. And um, we, we gather each year on Memorial Day weekend to honor those that have given their lives in service to our country and especially those from Sunderland who have given their lives. And um, the service that's been put together over many years um, is a very meaningful and wonderful service um, and ceremony. And so I appreciate everyone being here and uh, all the efforts made to make this happen despite of the, the weather and everything else outside. We uh, begin this evening by asking you all to rise as the colors are presented by the VFW Post. This time we'll have a couple of our veterans place the wreath in front of the flag. Please be seated. This year for the first time, uh, I, I guess in many years, um, Governor Baker has issued a Memorial Day proclamation and sent it out to all of the 350 some cities and towns in the Commonwealth. And so David Pierce of the Select Board will now read that proclamation to us. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor the, those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And, whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And, whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And, whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens Remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim Monday, May 29th, 2017, to be Memorial Day. And our opening prayer of invocation by the Reverend Barbara Seaman of the First Congregational Church here in Sunderland.
Barbara is related to General John A. Logan, who was the Supreme, uh, the, the commander of the Army of the Potomac, who initiated the first Memorial Day, if you will, toward the end of the Civil War, indicating that all the graves of both uh, the Confederates and the Union armies should be decorated with flowers in memory of the sacrifice that they gave uh, during that war, and it has become the Memorial Day that we celebrate today. So it is actually a, a, a double honor to have Barbara here uh, giving the opening invocation uh, for our services uh, in Sunderland. Let us pray. Loving God in whom we live and breathe and have our being, hear us as we honor those who through the centuries have given their lives in service to our country. Bestow upon us mercy and grace that we may rightly remember their ultimate sacrifice. Remind us, O oh God, to listen for your voice of hope and grace that all people may one day live together in harmony and in peace. Shine your face through the clouds of loss be gracious unto us and lift your countenance upon us tonight as we speak each name. Amen. Amen. And let us stand at this time as the Frontier Band leads us in the National Anthem and let us join singing together. Uh, it'll sound great in this gymnasium, for sure. In February of 2004, the Board of Select Selectmen initiated the project of the creation of a town flag for the town of Sunderland. This was in response to the desire by the Commonwealth to have a town flag from each of the cities and towns across the state in the Hall of Flags at the State House in Boston. A design contest for the flag was voted upon at annual town meeting that spring, and the design of James Croft of South Hadley was ultimately chosen. The town had two flags made, one for the Hall of Flags at the State House and one for the meeting room in the town office building here in Sunderland. Nancy Lane McCall of Idaho made a replica of the town of Sunderland flag as a gift this past Christmas 
2016 for her father, a longtime Sunderland resident and active participant in town affairs for over many years, Russell M. Lane of North Silver Lane. Russell was planning to walk in the parade today with the flag being carried by one of his neighbors and by his daughter Patty from Boston. And we are glad to have them with us today and to present this flag uh, to many of you who perhaps have never seen it or known anything about it. This is our town flag, the town of Sunderland, of which we are proud not only of this flag, but of our town as well. Thank you very much. Memorial Day, we honor the oldest veteran uh, citizen of the town of Sunderland, and for several years in a row now, that honor has gone to James Clark Williams, better known to most of us as Jim. He was born on Memorial Day, May 30th, 1923, and while attending the University of New Hampshire, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in late 1942. He finished at UNH in the spring of 43, and then he was sent to Cornell to study until called to Paris Island and later to officer training at Quantico, Virginia. It was at this point in Jim's life when he attended his very first funeral. It was memorable for many reasons, one of the most important being it was for President Theodore Roosevelt's funeral in April of 1945. As a young man, he was struck by the look on Mr. Truman's eye that day as he served and represented the Marine Corps during his historic tribute. Jim went to Guam after two bombs were dropped on Japan toward the end of World War II. He was then sent to both the island of Saipan and Marcus Island in the Pacific to secure both of those islands. Upon completing these assignments in August of 1946, Jim came home to Sunderland. He arrived at the family's North Main Street farm to join his parents, Walter and Ruth, his younger brother, Gordon, and began farming for a living. And the farm is still active and going strong. It was just a few months later, in October 26th of 1946, that Jim married his sweetheart, Agnes Fitch, and was married for more than 60 years. We are honored to have Mr. Jim Williams here with us today, and we thank you for your service to your uh, country. many, many years to the town of Sunderland. Thank you very much, Jim, and we're glad to have you with us. At this time, I'd like to read the names of those veterans from the town of Sunderland who have passed away in the last year since our last Memorial Day ceremonies and then we will have a moment of silence in their memory. Thomas Herrick, who served in World War II. Waldemar J. Kalazuski, who served in World War II. Floyd Russell Locke, who also served in World War II. And Marion Taylor, who served in the Korean War. Let us please have a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. Our two uh, legislators that usually try to get here to be with us today, uh, Senator Stan Rosenberg and Representative Steve Kulik 
Uh, neither of whom were able to be with us today. Steve is actually sick and at home in bed in Worthington, which I don't think he sleeps in his bed in Worthington more than about 30 or 40 nights a year. So uh, he must not be feeling well if that's where he is. And Stan, um, as president of the Senate, is um, in Boston and was not able to get away today. And they both sent their regrets. Um, I, I know that they say it every year when they come, but I know that they really mean it, that they find the service in Sunderland, especially when we are able to be out by the cemetery, to be the most moving of the Memorial Day services that they've attended in their time in the legislature. And between them now, that's quite a few years. Um, I won't try to calculate how many. It might be beyond my math ability today, but they did send their regrets. Um, and we thank them for their uh, always thinking about the town of Sunderland and knowing about us and for the many, many years that they have been here with us. And now we would have a musical medley from Frontier Regional High School Band. We thank them for being here with us today. We know that they have uh, several engagements this weekend and thanks to their director, Max um, Cheryl, for um, the excellent job that you're doing with the band. As it become our custom over the last several years, we have asked the top two students, male and female, in the graduating class, senior class of 2017 from Frontier to be with us, to recognize them and to um, have them share in our ceremony. One of them was able to be with us this evening, um, Aaron Dorschau. Aaron is a Sunderland resident, as you know, lives just down the street a ways on Old Amherst Road. And he was a member of the National Honor Society, an AP Scholar Award winner in 2016. He was on the varsity cross country team for five years and was captain in his senior year last fall. He was a member of the diversity club and the debate club, the Latin club, and a part of the social justice initiative at Frontier last year and this year, whose goal is to increase acceptance and kindness within the student body for others, no matter their identity or beliefs. He has also served in our community as one of the library teen advisory board members, and he also served as an advisor to the U.S. Rep. James McGovern, our congressman, um, and the youth cabinet. 
on issues of importance to students from Frontier, sharing them with the congressman and uh, hoping that they might in fact make some impact on what is happening in terms of legislation in Congress and, and what is happening in our nation. Aaron plans to attend Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts and studies in political science and economics. And he is here this evening to share with us the reading of the Gettysburg Address. The Gettysburg Address is one of, is the most famous speech of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln and one of the most quoted speeches in United States history. It was delivered at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on the afternoon of Thursday, November 19, 1863 during the American Civil War, four and a half months after the Union armies defeated those of the Confederacy at the de decisive Battle of Gettysburg. In just over two minutes, Lincoln invoked the principles of human equality espoused by the Declaration of Independence and redefined the Civil War as a struggle not merely for the Union, but as a new birth of freedom that would bring true equality to all of its citizens. It is especially fitting that we recite it on Memorial Day as a reminder of the cost of our freedom and equality. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have gave their lives that that nation might live, it is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Congratulations, Aaron. At this time, we read the roll call of those Sunderland residents who died during conflicts beginning in the French and Indian War right up through the present time and gave that last full measure of devotion um, to their country and for us as well. At the time that we read each name, we also ring the Navy Memorial Bell which was given to us by Mr. White, who rang it for many years in our Memorial Day ceremony. And upon his death, the family gave it to us to use each year as we continue to um, honor Memorial Day in our town and in our nation. In the French and Indian War in 1722, there were four deceased. The first was Jonathan Bridgman.
Samuel Gunn. Nathaniel Montague. <laughs> Eli Scott. In the Revolutionary War, 60 served and there were no deceased. In the War of 1812, 6 served and there were no deceased. During the Civil War, 85 served and there were 8 deceased. Charles Blodgett. William Farrell. <laughs> Elliot Puffer. Fred B. Crocker. James Hill. Martin S. Hubbard. John Jones. Otis D. Munzel. In World War I, 42 served and there were two deceased. Edwin P. Cooley. Antonio Tomasco. In World War II, 161 served, there were three deceased. Lawrence Hubbard Bixby.
Michael Corpita. Leon Wozniakiewicz. In the Korean War, 37 men and one woman served, there were no deceased. In the Vietnam War, one deceased, Richard C. Graves. In the Persian Gulf Desert Storm, one served, there were no deceased. In Iraq and Afghanistan, we do not have current numbers. We're not aware of anyone who was deceased, however, from our town. We would now ask for the VFW to render honors for our fallen veterans from Sunderland. This concludes our ceremonies this evening. I have just a couple of announcements before we depart. Um, at the very end of these announcements, the honor guard will go out first, and then we will be able to um, depart. The Sunderland Volunteer Firemen's Association is providing refreshments out behind the school uh, at the pavilion. They are cooking hot dogs and have one of the refreshments they uh, had planned. Uh, so please uh, go out and uh, join them and uh, the rest of us in uh, some time together uh, as a community uh, at the beginning of this Memorial Day weekend. First, I'd like to thank the Rec Department, but especially Tracy Zachary, who's not on the Rec Department, but who has taken on the home decorating contest over the past uh, several years now. and. I think we have more homes decorated this year on South Main Street and School Street than ever before along the parade route. First prize winner is uh, 41 South Main Street, the whole family, and the second prize winner is 18 South Main Street, right next to the Millstone. 
So congratulations to them and We have signs that will grace their front lawns for the weekend and uh, some prizes for them as well. But it has been a wonderful addition to our parade and to our Memorial Day um, to see the South Main Street decorated and uh, all the flags that the highway department puts out for the occasion. We want to thank them as well. I'd like to uh, thank the Deerfield Waitley VFW Post 3295 for being uh, our honor guard and color guard as well as doing our gun salute and also organizing the bicycle decorating contest. Um, probably not quite as much as we would like to have had given the weather, but we thank them for their efforts and for being here with us. Um, we also thank um, Lenny Blacha and the veterans that are here to be a part of this ceremony. I'd like to also thank um, the Frontier Regional Band again and Max Sherrill. I'd um, like to thank the police department for helping with uh, crowd control and traffic control. Um, they do a wonderful job when we do have the parade and uh, it uh, takes a lot of work and coordination. We also thank the highway department again for the flags, Tom Zanowski for the PA system, Frontier Community TV for being here. And um, I would also just wish each and every one of you to have a enjoyable Memorial Day weekend, but think about the things that we've heard this evening that we've shared together. That's the reason for this long holiday weekend. And as we go off to family fun and baseball and softball games and more band playing and other uh, activities, um, let us remember what this long weekend is all about as we remember those who have served and who have fought and died for the freedoms that we enjoy in this great country of ours. So God bless you all and um, we will see you uh, out back hopefully for some refreshments. The Honor Guard, Color Guard will now recess.